Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Today we're going to do another installment of the weekly meta breakdown where we look at the top performing decks on the MTG Arena ladder. Um, we get this data from Untapped GG, which you see on the screen, companion tool that runs alongside your Arena client, tracks your win rates, loss rates, collections, a whole bunch of useful functionality, free to use a whole bunch of it. Link is in the video description below if you want to get started with that. Um, this video is for Explore Best of One. I'll paste these deck lists in the video description, so if you want to import them, you can do so. Um, but if you're set up with Untapped, you can just copy them directly to MTG, like you see the big buttons here. Um, quick programming note with the recent Baldur Gate set release, as well as some nerfs, I'm having a hard time, at least this week, getting a full data set for Historic Best of Three. Um, I'm probably gonna have to piece together Alchemy from like various sites. Um, and what we're seeing with Explorer this week, I'm locked um, for the recent data sets uh, until they get enough data. Um, once the current data, like metas, even though the meta, it's said that whenever a new set releases, it waits seven days to unlock to get, aggregate a data set, even though Baldur Gate doesn't affect it. It's annoying, but um, so this is June 9th to the 7th of July. So it's like a month. It's got the expressive iteration ban in there at least. Um, so those decks are filtered out. So a little bit of a bigger sample size, 190,000 games played. Um, so keep that in mind. This week's a little bit of an odd week. Whenever the new sets come out, we get a bridge in between. But jumping into it, top deck of the week or the month, uh, Selesnia Humans, 67% win rate. Um, so this is basically a mono white deck, splashing green for Collector Company. We see this very much alike to the Angels deck, mono white splash the company typically. Um, what we get from humans is stuff like Thalia's Lieutenant to pump up the squad. Uh, it gets bigger itself. The Dauntless Bodyguard protects your stuff. Giant Killer is removal. Thraben for card advantage. Luminarch to buff your squad. Thalia to tax. Redain, or sorry, Adeline just wins games on its own at times. Cathar is removal. Spellbinder is tax. And then Extraction Specialist works really nice with your Enter the Battlefield style effects. Uh, protection, Thraben to get more card draw. Valley is a tenant to get more buffs. Luminarch, even though it can't attack, can still buff your team. So a cool card in that regard. Also, Lifelink could help you in races if you're building it up big with counters. Um, so that is green-white humans. We then jump into spirits, 65%. Um, I've never played this deck because I don't own eight of the cards. You can see I have 31 rares that I can spend, but really what this is is it's kind of a tempo-style strategy. Um, Rattle Chains is a really good engine for this deck. Let, protects your stuff at instant speed, giving a hexproof. So it's like a protection spell. It's also a creature that lets your other spirits come and play with Flash. You have Lord Effects and Supreme Phantom. Uh, Spectral Adversary can phase out your opponent's stuff. Shackle Geist can get rid of attackers or blockers. Uh, Ascendant Spirit just lets you sink mana into it and make it just buff and swole. Um, Sailor for card advantage. Curious Obsession for card advantage. Whole bunch of protection and counter spells, spell pierce, fading hope can be used proactively or reactively, lofty denial, um, geist snare in this deck can cost as little as one mana. You got bounce and borrower, and then some card advantage in cemetery illuminator, uh, as well as the three faceless havens, which are spirits at heart. Um, they're spirit goats, shapeshifters, and all. Uh, next deck, Rakdos Sacrifice. Um, so in Historic and Alchemy, the cat has been nerfed. It can no longer block. Um, but this is a kind of a more old school-esque. Um, we've seen some versions start going back to Priest in their decks, but there's so many of these creature decks, like smaller style, that we're seeing an increase in Claim of the Firstborn coming back. Very good removal with a lot of ways to kind of sack their creatures for value. So you can obviously sacrifice it to the oven, you have six card draw effects in Deadly Disputes and Village Rights. You also have Nixless in this deck, which plays really nice. Steal their thing, sack their thing, live the dream. Your opponent is like, hey, I'm playing Fight Rigging. Here's my Reggie. And you're like, can I borrow that? Here's my Ob, ultimate, draw seven cards. Um, so some cool value there. Uh, Mayhem Devil, the, the works. Um, lots of just ping things. And yeah, I got him just wrecked by Eden Alive recently, it feels like. Seen an upshift in this card being played. Um, so yeah, next deck, Mono Green Stompy Stomps. Uh, so it's another collector company deck. A lot of these green-based creature decks are company decks. Um, so you have Ramp in Llanowar, Pelt Collector gets bigger, Crawl Harpooner deals with Flyers, 
ooze and hearse for graveyard hate so this deck does not want to lose to grease fang uh, pack leader gets really big got some really strong overstatted three drops in steel leaf and old growth troll then kazandu which counts as a land that could be hit off company uh, as well as ronas primal mites in there as well one little note because you're not on blizzard brawl in this deck you technically shouldn't be playing snow covered forest if you want to be optimized um there's not a lot of redain if any but on the off chance there is why kind of play into that if you're not playing blizzard brawl there's no reason to play it uh, i would just play regular forest get those sick full, full arts your pokemon ones your uh new capenna ones whatever it is the correct answer is always unhinged full arts the best lines don't come at me in the comments um, but you get Pazeju and Lair in there as well. Uh, next, Mardu Grease Fang. Uh, the combo that you, when you play it, your Grease Fangs or Parhelions are the last eight cards of your deck. When your opponent plays it, it's always turn three. Uh, and really what you're trying to do with this deck, for those unfamiliar, you throw Parhelion in the graveyard. You cast Grease Fang. Grease Fang's like, yo, vehicle, come back into play. You get haste. And then you smack your opponent for 13. And then your opponent goes up to the top right hand corner and concedes the game. Uh, and the way you do this is like stitch your supplier fuel in your graveyard, lightning axe, the blood tokens. Uh, you can bring stuff back with can't stay awake, uh, deadly dispute for card advantage, fable throws things into the graveyard, croxa as kind of residual value, the big boat to just kind of kill things. Um, it's a fun deck, it's very susceptible to graveyard hate, but I, I've enjoyed it from time to time. All right. I'm gonna show you the bad version and then I'm gonna show you the good version. So Lesney Angels, very popular deck. This one's got 61% win rate. Now, you can follow this deck. You're playing shitty cards like Angel of Vitality. This is not a playable magic card. Speaker of the Heavens, people see the words Angel and Life Link and 27 Life. This card is not good in this particular meta. Reason being, let's look at the decks. Can it attack into any of these decks? Oh no, it can't. You're not going to block with it. Can it attack into spirits? No, they're going to block. Can it attack into sacrifice? No, it's going to block. Can it attack into mono green? Can it attack into grease fang? No. So you can't attack with this. You can't block with it because then it loses its value. It's only good when you're already ahead on board, but it doesn't help you get ahead on board. There's much better one drop in the format. Youthful Valkyrie is overrated. It's only good, again, if you get other angels. Otherwise, it's a two drop that does nothing and just dies to removal. All right, so Legion Angels also, whatever. I can see it being played in there. Also, this mana base. Why are you not playing four? Why are you not playing four? Um, I have an 83% win rate. I got to number 16 Mythic with this at the beginning of the season. I have multiple seven win event runs with this. This is the, the version to play with, I'd say, if you want to play angels. Got other players play it. They got really high with it. Lunark Veteran. So the deck is a Resplendent Angel deck. Look at it in that manner. You want to guarantee that you can hit Resplendent Angel five life. The best way to do that, turn one, Lunark Veteran. Turn two, Bishop of Wings. This comes into play. Trigger five life. You get angels. Your opponent can't really come back from that. Now, Prosperous Innkeeper. The deck wants, if you can go turn three, collect a company that puts you ahead. It's also another way, similar to the Luminarch, that you can gain life. Um, really what you want to do is, as much as possible, try to hit that 27 life or hit the five life interval in one shot. This allows you to do so. It also helps you keep land light hands and kind of get some value out of that. Trellisara seems a little odd, not an angel, but it's just a big body that can also help you filter your draws. Late game, you can push away all the useless lands. Uh, in the mirrors, most importantly, never go to best of one format where Angels is popular without your friend, our Lord and Savior, a Johnny Strength of the Pride. Zero, you can wipe out your opponent's board, attack in, win. So the games often revolve in the mirrors where opponents are, you and your opponent are like 500 life, you have boards of like 75 Angels. Trelasara just digs, finds a Johnny, and you win on the spot. Uh, Righteous Valkyrie, obviously very good. Uh, Giada, play a three of, four of it's kind of weak. There's a lot of fatal push, there's stomps. Uh, just lots of ways to kind of interact with it. It does some stuff, but not like huge amounts. Doesn't really necessarily, it's legendary as well. So keep that in mind. I think this, and then just 
This is the card that I'm like least happy with. There's just not a better alternative. Filters your draws, gain you a life. Uh, kind of gives you some value that way. Um, three Skyclaves, because you need removal in this format. And then this mana base is a lot more refined. A Bazeju, a Cave, you got your Zhanjos in there. Um, I actually went up to, if I'm not mistaken, I went up to two Caves. I think I'm on two Caves. I'll have to double check, but I play two Caves right now. I'll go down to Plains, um, I would say with that. I was playing on mobile as well. I got a couple seven win runs on mobile. This one doesn't show it, does it? No. This is a fun deck to just play on your phone too. Because you often just win by turn four or five. Um, and they, sorry, I played a lot of this deck. So if you have questions, there's a video up on it. Just ask me in the comments. I can explain any of the thought choices, stuff like that. All right, back to it. Uh, Azorius Control. Um, this one, so basically with Azorius, there's kind of two versions. There's the Yorian, um, kind of blinky-ish one. And there's a Strict Proctor Lotus Field combo. This is the Lotus Field one at 61%. Um, Lo Strict Proctor stops under the battlefield effects, lets you get your Lotus Field into play on turn three and not have to sacrifice. Other than that, it's just saying no to your opponent through either counter spells or removal. You win through Wandering Emperor, Teferi, um, just Dejection as you cast Farewell, Shark Typhoon, or Hall of the Storm Giant. Um, I was saying the other day, like, this is just, this is one of the most egregious cards I think they've printed in a while. Like, it eliminates all the counterplay from non-control decks. Typically, you would think post-board. So say for Mono Red, I'd bring in Roiling Vortex. You'd bring in Vehicles. You'd bring in stuff, like, Beyond that just creature <coughs> removal gets caught in Sweepers. And the fact this does everything, it exiles as opposed to just Graveyard, so you lose the Graveyard strategies. I just, I hate this card so much. Um... This is coming from a guy who played nothing but Sphinx's Revelation, all of RTR block standard. Uh, yeah, so Mono Red. Uh, this one I want to just kind of highlight. It's an interesting one. Some inclusions in here that you don't see all the time. Uh, so this is an Annex version with the Embercleave Torbrand top end. Singular Goblin Chain Whirler. This version's got Runaway Steamkin in it, which is interesting. I don't like three Kari Zevs. Legendary, every card's got to count in mono red because your turn you usually are win or lose by turn four or five. Um, interesting to see no robber the rich, instead the Earthshaker Kenra. Again, another card I think robber's very good. You're playing one drops in Soulscar Mage and Fanatical Firebrand in addition to Kumano. Soulscar really only gets the buff in this deck by Embercleave. Um, Another card that's an interesting inclusion. If you've played this version or something similar, let me know what your thoughts are compared to the typical mono red. Then we go to Jund Fight Rigging at 59%. We've seen black green, we've seen Saltai with Emergent Ultimatum. The Jund version is basically playing in for Bone Crusher Giant, some copies of Nixus. Uh, this is kind of a dated version. A lot of them have just gone heavy on the Henge as the top end as opposed to Galta. But basically, play a big stupid thing on turn two or three and then play Fight Rigging to cheat something in and kind of get value and utility there. I think the Crokey's version, just the green block with like Pelucranos and Henge is probably a safer bet. Um, but I do like the access to Bone Crusher in, all, in this one. You also get Valky, but Valky on its own is kind of a weak card. Um, and then lastly, Rakdos Midrange. This is kind of the gem of the format, like Money Pile. Uh, kill things, eat out your opponent's hand, and then just everything's two for one. Two for one, two for one, two for one, two for one, value engines, glory bringer. The, the hottest thing with this deck is just reflection of the Kiki, a glory bringer every turn to kill your opponent's stuff. Um, but this is another popular deck. I think it's better in best of three because you can tailor your package depending on control or aggro. Um, but still a deck that you see quite often in um, best of one. All right, so that's it for the week. Let me know what you've been playing, what you've been liking, what you haven't. Um, and we will catch you next week. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you have a safe one.